So I thought it'd be fun to show off some of the new usability features that I've been adding to Lightburn. So here we go. One of my favorites <coughs> is this, drag and drop. So you can pull files out of your desktop, drop them onto Lightburn. They will import uh, as appropriate for the format. So this is an AI file. I can do the same thing with bitmaps. It's a small thing, but it's actually kind of a big thing. Uh, we also have cut and paste now, so I can create duplicates of things easily. Um, what else? Of course, there's still full undo. Um, so yeah, cut, copy, and paste all work. Um, the new preview uh, is kind of cool. Let me find a file that's appropriate for previewing. Um, Maybe we'll do this one. All right, so this is a fairly complicated vector file. Um, if I set this to just cut as it is here um, and I run the preview, you can see uh, you just get cut outlines here. Um, and I can rewind the preview and watch basically how it's going to cut, in what order everything is going to cut. Um, so this is kind of a way to check your work to see what the cut planner chose to do with your stuff. Um, when you've got things that are arranged a little differently, um, let's see, uh, where it is, I thought I had a different file, oh, this one, okay. So here we've got six pumpkins, they've got small inner vectors, um, and outlines, little things inside, that kind of thing. So the <clears throat> way that you would want these to cut would be obviously the inners first and then the outer curves. Uh, you don't want it cutting your outside first and then the small stuff in the middle. So in this case, if we look at the preview, we can see it's doing all of the inside curves first, then following with the outside curves, and it's also trying to optimize the path travel um, to reduce rapid moves. So again, a small thing, but it's a useful thing. Um, some navigation stuff for people who are used to working on a Mac. Uh, I've got drag the view. Um, what else? Frame the current selection will frame everything or it will frame whatever you currently have. Um, so if I don't have stuff in my, or if I, sorry, don't have a selection and I hit frame, it will frame everything that's currently on the page. Um, in fact, if I don't have any selection at all, it will just frame the page for me. Um, I've also made some changes to the offsetting tool, so it performs a lot better. The results are considerably cleaner, so if I make some sort of weird arbitrary shape here um, and I run an offset of that, uh, first of all, the offset is quite a bit faster. Um, you don't really notice it on small stuff, but you do notice it quite a bit on big stuff. This is the important one here though, this optimize or simplify results. If you leave that off, if I look at the output that this generates, you can see that these points are all, or these curves, sorry, are all very, very fine points. If I run an offset with, oh, let me see why, there we go. If I run an offset with that simplification enabled, so we'll push this curve out just a little bit so you can see both. Uh, select both of these curves and look at the node outputs. And so you can see this one generated nice splines, this one generated tons of points. Um, the two curves are equally accurate. Um, I'm running a spline fit algorithm or a curve fit algorithm uh, over the resulting points after it's uh, generated the shape. Um, and it does a good job. Uh, it also means that if you offset and offset, uh, the results don't get full of points like they used to. And so that's kind of a big deal. I wanted, uh, I wanted it to be able to handle offsetting an offset of an offset of an offset and, you know, uh, recurse infinitely. Uh, I'll pick that curve and that curve. And so now you can see even the offset of the offset is still quite clean. There's a few extra points, but it's not bad. So I'm happy with the result. 
then finally, one last thing. Again, it's a small feature, but it's a useful feature. Um, I didn't have it before, and it was sorely missed. We now have the ability to aspect lock. So if I use the numeric editor to change this to be narrower, this is what you used to get. If you enable the aspect lock, and I type that in, you can see it maintains the aspect ratio correctly. The drag still works the way it used to, so you can still drag from corners and do all of that. Uh, however, those can be constrained as well by holding the shift key. Um, and if you hold the shift and control keys, it does the scaling from middle out. So you can do scale from middle or lock the aspect ratio when you're holding these corners.